We're up to the Mem Gimel Ahmed Aleph. We are up to the Mishnah. So the Mishnah continues in a case that is a mother and is a mother. And the um, question is, what the mother and the mother kind of relationship can they have if he said that this person should have no benefit from me? So we're continuing. Amala, he said to him, Ashilaini Paraschal, lend me your cow. Amala, the guy said, Sorry, I have a cow, but it's not free. It's not free to be loaned. Oma, the guy gets so angry, the one who asked, I so angry, he said, You know what? Even if you give it to me, I ask in my field ever to use your cow to plow my field. So, the, so what, how far did he take it? Did he, it was it sort of on the field or was it more on him? In other words, if you had other workers, can they use the cow in the future or not? If he was the one generally who did the plowing, then when he got angry, he was saying, I will never use a cow. Then who also that he can never use a cow in the future? Everybody else can. If he were trying to go into his mind and understand what exactly was he trying to say. If he himself never plowed the field, so if he said, and he got out of anger, he said, we'll never use your cow. Obviously, he wasn't talking about himself because he never, he never used it anyway. He was talking about the field. I don't want that your cow should ever be on my field plowing. Who vichol other masur is forbidden for everybody. Okay, we're in the middle of the page of the Mishnah. Let's say Reuben is forbidden to have any benefit from Shimon. Or Shimon don't have any benefit from Reuben. The Engel Mayechel. What happens if the Mudr, the one who does not have any pleasure from the benefactor, unfortunately has nothing to eat? And he cannot, Tzadok or whatever, he can't give him because then, the, then he's benefiting from him. So what happens? He goes to a uh, storekeeper that he generally frequents, that he knows well. <clears throat> and he says, look, that person there is not allowed to have any benefit from you. He does not have any benefit from me. Then he's a master. I don't know what to do. You cannot ask the innkeeper, a third party, to, to give food to that person. He's a shaliach. And that means that guy is benefiting from you. So what do you do? Is any day my answer? I don't know what to do. You're talking about, I say, I don't know. Who knows? The storekeeper gives the money, gives food or whatever it is to that person. But he's not allowed to turn around and demand or go to the trader to the person who came into him and said, if I did it, if he did it, he did it on shalichas. And then hopefully this person who expressed this opinion will pay up. Because if it's like an arranged thing, then it's just a, a scheme uh, and doesn't help. What about how you base the live nice? What happened to the guy that you said, I don't have any benefit of me, he has a house that has to be built, that has a fence that has to be put up, so they a field that has to be harvested. He goes to the workers, what Amy says, he says, this person is many. Um, he unfortunately cannot have any benefit of me. He needs a house, I don't know what to do. Same thing. So they go do the work and then they go to him and hopefully he'll give them the wages. Again, they, he did not appoint him as a shliach. If he appointed them, he said, go help them out. Then again, you're not allowed to. So you, what happened if we're going on the road? What happens if they were traveling the road? They got on deed. And you, you want to give him the doctor, but again, you can't give him because he's benefiting from you. In this case, give it to a third party as a gift. And then it can pass on to him because he's not getting anything from you. He's getting from another person. Whatever you mean, there's no one else around. Just you and him out there in the, in, in the wilderness. You place it on a boulder or on a fence. And you say the following. This is a half gift for the whole world. Then my long night to and the other person can come and take it because he's not getting it from you, he's getting it. it's ownerless, it belongs to nobody, so he can take it. However, Rabbi Yaisi says that is forbidden. And the question is, why would Rabbi Yaisi say that that is forbidden? Why would he say that's forbidden? So we'll see in the Gemara different explanations. And this gives us an understanding in the concept of Hefker. Again, interesting. If you want to know what Hefker is, why would you think of looking in the dirt? You'll see in a minute, we'll explain the famous Rambam, the Ksas, why we were looking in the dark for Hefker. <coughs> but now we are going to be given the parameters of what Hefker is. Rabbi Yaisi says that even placing on the boulder, the guy has on the eat, he cannot eat from that food because it's So, 
It says the Gemara, Omer Rabbi Yechel, Yechel says, my time with Rabbi Yechel. So we have different severus of what the logic of Rabbi is. So first we have Rabbi Yechel, and then we have Rabbi Rabbi Yechel says, you know what the logic of Rabbi is? So he holds, Hefke is kematonim. Hefke is like a gift. In other words, the Chachamim hold, as soon as you make something Hefke, it's no longer mine. Rabbi Yechel says, no. Hefke is still yours until someone else takes it. But until someone else takes it, it's still mine. So when this person goes to the boulder to take the food, who is he getting it from? From me. It wasn't ownerless before he got it. It was still mine until he picked it up. So at the end of the day, when he picked up that food to eat, he took it from me. And I said, you shouldn't have any enough for me. So Rabbi Yechon said, Rabbi Yechon hold Hefke like a Kenyan, it's no longer mine. Rabbi Yechon, my time with Rabbi Yechon, what's Rabbi Yechon's logic? So he holds Hefke just like a Matana. Ma Matana, just like a Matana. A matana is not considered a gift until it actually is taken acquired by the recipient. I've hefker, hefker also is considered mine. Until it comes in the domain of the zeich. We'll get to that soon. You want to talk about it? I'll tell you. Mostly, but I'm asking a question. First, I'm asking from Amish. It says, Right, but the brisa adds something to it. So the is that what the that uh, the Yeshi said you're not allowed to put it on the boulder because since he's not allowed to have any benefit from you, he cannot take it. However, Omar Rabbi Yeshi, the brisa adds the brisa adds a aside, There's a difference. When do we say that you're not allowed to take it from the boulder and Bizman should not refer first I made a net that you shouldn't have any benefit from me, and then to circumnavigate that problem, is a big kaidel of kaidel. Go ahead and make it half kaidel. Rabbi Yeshi doesn't work. Doesn't work. I have a board. I made it hefke first. I made it hefke first, and then after I made it hefke, then I go ahead and I make a net that I don't want to have any benefit from me. Since the hefke came in first, so then it's ownerless. The guy can you put it on the rock and the guy can take it. Now, if the logic is like Rabbi Yechon, what that while you mafke something, it's still mine until somebody else physically picks it up, makes a kinyan in it. I never lost my ownership. How did I lose my ownership? Just because I made it hefke, what am I saying is, anyone wants to take it, but till then, how did it come no longer mine? It's still mine, according to Rabbi Yaisi. So then, what's the difference if you made hefke first, or you made hefke second? The fact of the matter is, that when you um, that, when, uh, that you made a net, he shouldn't have any benefit from you, even though the hefke made six months ago, if nobody took it yet, who owns it right now? Still this very person, the mother. So how can the person who needs the food come along and take it afterwards? You're still getting it directly from the one who said, I won't have any benefit. You shouldn't have any benefit from me. What's the difference when you made the hefke, when you made the net? If that's the logic of Rabbi Yechen, where Rabbi Yechen understood it. Says the Gemara, if you're going to tell me, if you're going to tell me the whole word is it still belongs to the owner until somebody physically picks it up and makes an opinion. Is Mali Nidra Kaidma Kaidra, Mali Hiv Kaidra Kaidma Nidra? What in the world is the difference if he made the nether, if he made the nether before he made Hefker, or he made a Hefker first and then the nether? The fact is, it's still his ownership until someone picks it up. So when that poor person, when that person who's destitute takes the food from the rock, who is he taking it from? From the owner that he was that he was told he don't have any benefit from. Does he matter who Moisi Mishalman? Then he goes, he, he Rab Abu, asked the question and says, I have an answer to, for, to answer this question. It's not even a question according to Rabbi Yechon. And why is that? Because remember, Nadarim works on what, what do you have in mind? So the word is, what did he, if he did not, if he didn't make it happen, yeah, when he made the nether, it was a blanket half the nether. I don't want you have anything to do with me. No pleasure. So then when he makes it hefke, the fact is it's still mine. And therefore you can't take it. But if I made it hefke first, so when I made it hefke, it no, um, when then if I made it afterwards, as if I'm saying is, I don't want to have any benefit from me that still belongs to me in a, in a, in a normal way, not what I made hefke already. Because we're trying to understand exactly. We are trying to understand his mind. <clears throat> he asked a question and he answered. Since it's the next step, it's a continuation. It's not like he's uh, he's usurping what he did before. That was a hefke, it is hefke. And, and that I made before the nether. When I now step in and make a nether, it's about new things, other things, not that which I already made a hefke. And that's the difference. So even according to, so it's nuanced. So even according to Rabbi Yechlin, who says the head of Rabbi Yechlin is that that's belongs it's like hefke's kematana, until it comes with us, and therefore it's a problem. Problem, but if you made hefke first and then you made the nether, obviously the nether is to conform with your hefke you made before. That's how you work. So the nether therefore does not contradict what you did before. It's it's another layer, and therefore the hefke is alright.
That's what the Gemara wants to say. It says the Gemara have a problem with that. Now there's three different ways of learning next Gemara. I'll just tell you one of them. Oh, maybe two of them. It says the Gemara. <clears throat> Um, Masi, Rava, Rava asked a question on this answer, Rababa. You think it's a push to answer? Not so push. No, but your main answer is if I did something first and I did something second, I'm not trying to undermine what I did first. What I'm doing is I'm trying to work in with what I did first. So I made it have good and that, and that was av available to you. That remains that way. It's only anything else that, and beyond that, after that, that belongs to me, you cannot touch. I'll ask you a question. Masi, Rava, Rava asked the following question. Way number one of understanding it. And that is, a person is dying, a shrimp is dying, and he gives his estate over to, if he gives his entire estate over and he writes a will, I want all this to go to Yanko Schmetal Bell. Doesn't matter how many people he gives it to. And then he gets better. The thing is, he can, he can change his mind because it's clear the only reason why he gave, he distributed all of his assets is because he thought he was dying. Now it turned out to be that he didn't die. He, 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 um, he goes back. He comes back. To what happens? He only gave him a partial, a partial um, gift. Let's say he had um, two fields. He only gave him one of the fields. Then even if he gets better, that field is a Kenyan. remains that person because he left in himself enough and so on. What happens if he... Um, <clears throat> So this is the following. What happens if you gave half to one person, half to another person? Yeah, the fact that if you got better, both of them get canceled because he left nothing for himself. What happened the following case? Reuben was dying. He gave part of his assets to Shimon. And then he said, went to Laban and said, I'm giving you all my assets. I'm giving you all my assets. So the din is whatever he gave Shimon belongs to Shimon. And, um, and whatever he gave Levi. Uh, it's, it's nothing because they left on for himself. Now, how do we understand? If he gave half, when he said, Levi, I'm giving you all my assets, it, does he mean the remaining assets? In other words, if your spot is correct, that he doesn't undermine what he did first. So what he gave Shimon part of the assets, that remains. Then when he went to Levi, he said, Levi, I'm going to give you all my assets. He meant the remaining assets. So then the din should be that Shimon's, Shimon, when he gets better, not only does the, the distribution to Levi get canceled, so too the distribution to Shimon should get canceled because he left nothing for himself. So the only way to understand the shot here is he changed his mind. He's a nimlech. He said to Shimon, I'm giving you half my assets. Then he turned to Levi and said, I'm giving you all my assets. When he said, I'm giving to Levi, I'm giving you all my assets. I'm undermining what I said before. I'm changing my mind. You know what? I'm, I'm forget what I said. I'm giving half to Shimon. I'm giving all of it to Levi. Therefore, what he gave to Levi is meaningless, is meaningless because uh, he left nothing for himself. But what he gave to Shimon then remains because he only gave him half of his assets. So what do we see from here? That when a person does something later, he definitely is undermining what he did before. Your whole answer was that when he made a hefke first and then he made a nether. He wasn't undermining the hefke they made before. That remains the way it is. You can have that. There's only other things. Here was it clearly that you changed your mind. Otherwise, the shot here, I think, is confusing enough. So this is a this is a shot. Otherwise, it was avodim, nothing to do with the case at all. But the same idea: are you undermining what you did before or not? Says the Gemara. But the, the question is, Masiv Rav, Mitzas and Lerishin. He says, I'm giving part of my assets to uh, one person, and then he said, the Kul and Lerishin. I'm giving all my assets to another person. Rishin Kana Shani like Kana. It says that the first person is Kana, the second one is not Kana. Now Lechayda, if he meant the remaining assets to the second person, then neither of them should be Kana because he left nothing for himself. The fact that Rishin Kana and Shani like Kana means clearly that the Shani he completely uh, contradicted his first thing, and he's allowed to because he can change his mind. And since the, the, he gave all of it to Shani, and therefore when he got better, Shani gets nothing. So Reuven kicks back in, and Reuven gets uh, the first guy gets his half. Which means that when he adds another layer, adding a layer, he completely contradicts or undermines what he initially said. Elamurabu said, I'll give you another husband, Rabbi Yaisi. I know time Rabbi Yaisi what is. Nothing to do with this. Rabbi Yaisi also agrees that when you give Hefkis, Hefkis straight away, it's ownerless. We know what it means. We are going to learn an interesting Gemara later on. And that is where a person had a fight with his father or something and he said i don't want you to have any benefit from me and he made a chasna for his children or for one of his children and he wanted his father to join in so he gave the whole suda to a friend it's called the based chayden. i'm giving it to you so that my father can eat because not my meal is his meal and then the gemara said that's only a, a, a trick it doesn't really work because if the friend decided to take the food and give it to somebody else can he does he really own it can he make an egg dish 
call matonish, you can mat this base chayd, and you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a valid matonish if you give a matonish and you limit it. In other words, I'm only doing it in order for this, for my father to be able to eat. So that's not a genuine hefka. And the same thing here, because there's nobody else in the wilderness except me, the mother and the mother, the guy who has no food, I'm not making it hefka because I really mean to make it hefka. I'm thinking of a way, a device of how can I give you food without you benefiting from me. So it's not a genuine hefka. And that's the problem. That's what I basically said. It looks like a matas based chayda. It looks like not really because the fact is you are making it hefka completely, and just happens to me that this is the only guy there. But because it looks like it's not a it's not a genuine hefka, that's why it doesn't work. But Rabbi Yisi in principle agrees that Rabban and that as soon as you make something hefka, it is hefka. <clears throat> okay, Tanya, we learned. Um, Actually, the one of the shame views a lot should even cook enough, but anyway. Um, but yeah, let's assume let's assume that you're right. Now um there is we might talk about the Ramam tomorrow. Let's look a bit next tomorrow. Okay, the Halton Cup. Tanya will never ice. There's like three different ways of learning the next Gemara here, and and, and the Halach as well. But Tanya will learn in a Brice, so we can ask a question. We learned in a Brice. <clears throat> Ha, two parts of Raisa. There's a Raisa and there's a Seifa, and they seem to be contradicting to each other. We're going back now to Rabbi Yechon. Rabbi Yechon wanted to say that according to the Rabbanon, as soon as you make something happy, it's no longer yours. Right? And Rabbi Yechon said that, no, that if you make something happy, it's still considered yours until somebody else comes along and makes a Kenyan and takes away. Till that moment, it's still yours. That's the That's why Rabbi Yechon says you cannot put it on the boulder because when that person comes to the boulder and takes the food, he's taking it directly from you. So we have two parts of the Brice and we're trying to understand because it seems that the Brice have one part of it following the Rabbanon and one part of the Brice. And that is, can a person change, according to Rabbi Yaisi, it, the logic is, you can, if you make something happier, you can still change your mind because it's still mine until someone takes it. Once somebody takes it, I can't change my mind anymore. But until someone takes it, change your mind. According to the Rabbanon, the moment you make something happier, it's no longer mine. You can no longer change your mind. So let's now learn the Brice. Tanya, we learn... <clears throat> That's a day if somebody decides to make his field hefker in the first three days, we made a special takana that the first three days you can still have harata. Interesting. Why? We'll see soon. First, you can have harata. Because as Gemara will explain later, we don't want people to forget the whole idea of hefker. But we'll see later. For here on in, you can no longer change your mind. From here on in, you can no longer change your mind. The takana, the special takana is over. So after three days, you cannot change your mind. Who says that if you make it hefkin, if, if even though nobody actually acquired it, it's um, you cannot change your mind. That's a chachamim. They hold hefkin means it's no longer yours. The first three days, we make it still yours, and and the reason is we'll see later because of takana sramoyin. Takana sramoyin is we are worried. This is the rabbi comes in. People would do is they would make their field hefkin. So that you can avoid paying mices and right away taking it right back. So that's how they get around giving truma and mices because the din is if it's hefker, sorry? No, only for gruba. So therefore, the din is we learn from Apostle that if it's hefker, you're part from truma and mices. So he makes it hefker and then he takes it right back. So therefore, we say the first three days is still yours. You didn't, you didn't really achieve anything because it's still yours. Now, Big Machlek is a shame. What happens if somebody did take it those first three days? I could change my mind. But what happens if somebody did take it? So Machlek is a shame. The Rosh himself has two, within himself, he has two to the shame. Whether if somebody took it, then Itaka would be a good taking. Because the fact is, it is Hefkid. I can, the Balbos can change his mind. But if he didn't change his mind yet, and you took it, you took it from Hefkid. In fact, the Balbos himself can take it from Hefkid. If the Balbos, if the Balbos took the fruits to eat, He's chayv a mice to avoid these people who you know these tricksters. But if he says, "I want to be coined like from Hefker, then he's part of a mice. So what did we achieve with this takon? So then they, what did we achieve? So the Mephoshim already explained. What we achieved is he's scared to treat it like Hefker. Because if you treat like Hefker, the fruits of trees, you have to be coined all the trees. Whatever somebody else jumps in, 20 people standing around, they see what he did, and they get it they're faster than he is. He's an old man, he can hardly move. Or they get it faster than him, or they get to the other side of the field. He's scared to treat it like hefker. So therefore, he'd rather just, you know, in his mind, he thinks he can have harat. I'll say it's hefker, take the fruit uh, or whatever it is and change his mind. 
But now that we're told that you cannot, uh, uh, and what do you call it? Um, but now that we're told that you cannot, that you can't, you know, it's, he thinks that he can make it happen a second later, say that it's, it's, it's have good, whatever it is. He can't do that. Okay, we'll see later. But the fact is, he cannot change his mind after three days. What does that tell us? That's no longer his. This is the Chachamim. This is the Chachamim. Then, he, then the Brayse continues the second half of the Brayse. Omar, he says, to hey, so the Zoom of Kelly and I want the field to be Hefke for one day. Le Shabbos Aches, for one week. Le Chaydesh Echad. No, there's a time limit. How long this is Hefke? <clears throat> for one month. Le Shona Aches, for one year. Le Shvuach, even for one cycle of Shemitah. Is ad shaloi zochabah bein hu bein acha yochalach. But here we don't have a limit, a statute of limitations. He knows even for seven years, if nobody took it, he can still change his mind. Who holds that it's still considered yours even after three days? It's still yours. Rabbi Yaisi, mishe zochabah bein hu bein acha yochalach. Once, however, somebody zoycha, you can no longer change your mind. Reisha rabbanu save Rabbi Yaisi. So it's very very odd. The Rosh is Rabbanu that after three days you can no longer change your mind because it's no longer yours. And the Sefer says, you give a time limit of 75 years, you can always change your mind as long as nobody was coined it yet. You can change your mind to the very end because it's still yours, which is Rabbi Yaisi. How does that work? Does he have to be coined after the time period expires? No, that's the separate issue. No. So if, if you were coined yourself, you part of my soul, if, if, if you change your mind, it's still yours. But if you were coined it yourself, you change your mind. Even, we either him, and he's like a stranger. It's no different than him or anybody else. We'll see anymore tomorrow that you have to do it in front of three people so that you don't make a trick or at least one person. So that, you know, it's, it's a real heavy. Why he did that, he said, in case nobody comes, I'll take it back. Well, I'll tell you, uh, there's an interesting halach in Shulchan Aruch. The tour brings it down in the Yerush Shabbos. And it's the gate, it's the gate tomorrow, tomorrow. But basically what he, the, the tour says in Yerush Shabbos, and it's also a Mishpah, that if you rent out your, or you lend somebody your cow to plow to a guy from Monday to Friday, but the goy couldn't make it back. It was rainy. He couldn't bring it back to Friday. I mean, the goy will continue working with your cow on Shabbat. But the tell is man, you know, that your cow has to rest. So you make it hefke just for the day. You make it, you say to yourself, I want it to be hefke for Shabbos. And if you say, I want to be hefke for Shabbos, this way you get around the, 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 the Easter of your animal work. Because I'm an animal. But on Sunday, you want it back. I'm going to say Shabbos, you want it back. So that's how this law is used in Halach. Then the question is, there's nobody around. Is it a real hefker or not? And how's it help? Because Rabbi Yaisi, he says it's still yours until somebody takes it. So what did you gain? This only when you have no choice. <laughs> okay. So the Gemara. Ula um, first answers. Amr Ula. Ula says, "Save for Nami Rabbanon. It's all Rabbanon. Rabbanon. Save Rabbanon. Ula Chayde. It's Rabbanon." How come he can change his mind? Let's say he did it for a month. How come he can change his mind the entire month? The word is, because he only gave a limited time, what's he showing us? He's showing us he never really wants to give up ownership because he wants it back after a week. He wants it back after a month. In this case, that is still yours unless somebody takes it. Another one, you say a month or a year, it's only if nobody takes it. So, um, but if somebody took it, it's a foul. The guy, the guy took it, became his. So, but the fact that you said you want it back, that means you're, that means you still have some kind of a link, Kesha, with that particular item. And because you have a link with that item, therefore, Rabbana say, we agree with Rabbi Yaisi, you can change your mind till the very end. So, you say, oh, so if so, why do we say until, um, until he wasn't like, Bain who, Bain Acha, Yochalachzba? That he can change his mind. Why Taka? We answer shiny shana shuad lashkichari. Why over here do we say that he can uh, uh, he change his mind? Because it's this is so uncommon. This kind of hefker. Who does this? Who makes a hefker and says, "I'm going to make a hefker for the next week"? And if, if somebody wants, it, he can have it. Who, who makes it that way? <clears throat> so, um, so, so therefore, because it's such a weak hefker. Um, and he's always looking forward, to, I'm going to get it back. Because in fact, you put that rider in there, it means you're thinking, you're hoping in a way you want to get it back. And why you made it for a week, who knows? Maybe the tax department, you want them to know you don't have any assets at the time, whatever your, whatever the reason is. So therefore, Rabbana Maida, that you can change your mind. And, and because it's Leshkiach, it doesn't hurt all the other Hefkei, Hefke, we said it's Hefke straight away. <clears throat> That's one answer. So, Kodja Ula, it's all the Rabbana. 
I mean, I mean, according to Rabbi Yaisi, you can, um, there's no such thing as three days. According to Rabbi Yaisi, you can change your mind from day one all the way to the very end. And the Rabbanan hold that generally you can change your mind, except unless it's Hefkel Lizman. Hefkel Lizman, Rabban say you can never change your mind. It's too late. Once it's gone, it's gone. Except if it's Hefkel Lizman. And that was done. Where it was made. So you can ask one answer. Uh, <clears throat> um, Reish Lakish says, no. I say, I agree, you can't have two different numbers. Even though we had in Shas a few times in Erebin that, you know, the, yes, like Abayi said a few times, first part of the mission is one ton, the second part, but if you have a better answer where you can make it conform with one ton, it's better to the way. So Rabbi Yishlaki said, no, the entire mission is Rabbi Yishlaki. No, Rabbi, Yishlaki. No, Rabbi Yishlaki holds you can change your mind, which makes sense. So how come the Reisha says, once three days go by, you can no longer change your mind? So Reisha, in the time, you know what? We don't want that the idea, um, so really, he can change his mind as long as he wants. And therefore, he can change his mind. It means it's still his. And therefore, he's chayv and maiseh until somebody physically takes it. However, the chacham made a special sakana that after three days, he can no longer change your mind, that people should, should not forget the idea of hefka. Because then otherwise, people think they heard that he made it hefka. And then they see uh, a week, two weeks later that... Um, that he has that he takes it has to give mice so they're gonna say ah hefke needs to give mice they're gonna forget the whole idea that hefke doesn't need mice and it's very important to know the hefke part of mice don't think he, it's a humor of what's a big deal because you might then be giving truma or hefke from this field on another field and you're not allowed to give truma from a field which bets him as potter on a field which bets him as chayat we don't want people to forget the notion of hefke and that's why we don't do that way yeah so the gemara um, so if you're worried about people who get idea of hefka, why wait three days? Do right away. This is what the Ramayim come in. The Mafkidin, what the Ramayim we should do was, they would make the people who have big farms and had to give away 10%, that's a lot. So they would go ahead and make the field hefka and the Hodgen burn. They would make the field hefka and then they would change their mind. And therefore, they're, 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 in a way, they'll be part of hefka. <clears throat> um... Sorry, So it's a takonas chachamim. Really, my toyda, this all abiyasi. My toyda, it's still mine. My toyda, I'm chayiv to remaisis. But the rabbanon said, no, we're going to treat it like hefker, that you're going to be potter from trumas and maisus, and 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 so on. <clears throat> so this looks like this. So, so, so the first, we have the first three days and beyond. So beyond three days. Rabbi Yeshi says you cannot change your minds because you know, people should remember this thing called Hefke. The first three days, however, we, we decided that we're not going to leave the, the we're gonna, not going to make it Hefke. We're not worried that people forget about Hefke because we have another concern. We have two concerns here. One concern is that people forget the whole idea of Hefke. The other concern is that people are going to try to circumvent the rules and, and make it Hefke. So therefore, we're going to say the first three days, he's still Chayv and Maisa. And after three days, um, you should know we don't want people to forget the idea of Hefke, so we're going to say that, it, that it's, it's considered Hefke regardless. But Hefke is man, Rabbi AC says, in that case is different because it's, it's not a normal case. And we're not worried about people forget Hefke because how often does it happen that person makes it Hefke for a month, for a, for a year, and, um, and so on. And tomorrow we'll talk more about the walls of Hefke. Okay, we'll stop here. And see you tomorrow. Can I ask something? Yeah, sure. Uh, with the Hefke, we're talking about the you know, potentially three days he can change his mind. But uh, actually, isn't it indefinite if no one's taken it? If it's out for Hefka, it's Hefka to everyone in the world, including himself. So, yes. so it, let's say at day five, no one's taken it. He, it's not that he's changing his mind. He thinks, well, no one's taking it. I'll now get that, yes. keep the Hefka myself. Two ways of him taking the Hefka himself. One way is that he's no different than any other stranger. He makes it Hefka in front of three people. To, five minutes later, he can be the first one there to take it back. Yeah. Like, he's no different than any other. Why should he be worse than any other stranger? Remember, we learned that according to Basil, Hefka has to be for everybody. But Niyam yeah. so yes. everybody. But um, according to Rapiesi, when he could actually change his mind, which means it was never Hefka in the first place. Hmm. Not that it was Hefka in the night I acquired a, a new ownership. I'm the original yeah. owner. Nothing changed. And that's the difference. And it affects Truma and Misa. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you know, he doesn't have to. If, if, if nothing changed, then he is Chaim Truma and yeah. Misa. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.